Netherlands from Germany and now we'll introduce ourselves. Hello, my name is Sarah, I'm 19 years old and I come from Germany and I like playing the flute and I like skiing and I'm living here with this Trident family. See you! Hi, I'm Katharina, I am 19 years old and I'm one of the five interns from Germany. I uh, originally come from the south of Germany and one thing about me that I really really like is playing music, especially playing the guitar. And I am staying with John and Vicky Rodding in Enfield. Hi, I'm Helene, um, I'm 18 years old but when you see this I'll be 19 years old. And I'm from Germany, I'm right now living with the Andersons and yeah, what I like to do in my free time is doing music, playing the piano, singing and yeah, I like dogs. <laughs> That's a fun fact about me. Hello, my name is Lea, I'm 18 years old and I'm from Germany and I like to walk in the forest and here in uh, England I'm living with Anne and Colin Quaintron. Hello beautiful people, here's Simon, I'm 18 years old and I'm really looking forward to serve um, and restore um, with my whole heart, my gifts and yeah, what God is going to do um, this uh, coming year with us. Um, yeah, and I really love football, um, I support Tottenham Hotspur's football club. Um, the last game against Newcastle was literally a joke, but okay. Um, yeah, I'm living with uh, Stephen and Lily, and they're really amazing and really lovely. We're looking forward to being part of this tour. Thank you for having us. Bye! Bye. Hi, this is Lucy and Albert from the Pierce household. Today we'll be reading a passage from Mark 4, 35 to 42 from the NASB. On that day, when evening came, he said to them, Let us go to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took him along with them in the boat, just as he was, and the other boats were with him. And there arose a fierce gale of wind, and the waves were breaking over the boat so much that the boat was already filling up. Jesus himself was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he got up and rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Hush, be still. And the wind died down, and it became perfectly calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Do you not have faith? They became very much afraid, and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now, let's pray for Ian as he preaches for us today. Thank you, God, for Ian as he preaches today, and we pray that he hears from you, and I also pray that everyone else can hear from you as well. And we thank you for our worship team as they sing and worship for us today. In the holy name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. Thank you to Lucy and Albert. I could feel the benefit of those prayers even right now standing here. Um, it's great to have the opportunity to be together, isn't it, in these days? And as Reinhardt said earlier, uh, it's really exciting this uh, latest series that Jody kicked off last week. We've called it The Jesus Way and we really had a sense that um, this year has been a year like, uh, like we've never experienced before. But the truth is Jesus is with us and Jesus wants to make a way, make a path pathway for each and every one of us through whatever challenges and whatever obstacles. I'm like you, I'll be interested to see what the latest government announcement is tomorrow. We literally day in, uh, day out, we're not quite sure what's going to hit us next. But the truth is that Jesus is with us and Jesus is always making a way through. And uh, I hope you tuned in last week. If you didn't, you can catch the service on YouTube and catch up. But Jodie did a brilliant introduction to the Jesus Way series and she built it around uh, a saying of Jesus in Matthew chapter 11, well-known saying from verse 28 to 30, where Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
And they're really powerful words, aren't they? Because Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he's saying, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And it's possible in the craziest of years in Jesus to know a sense of peace and rest where we know that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And so over the course of this series, we're going to look at uh, different gospel stories. So we want to go back to the simplicity of looking at Jesus and seeing how Jesus dealt with everyday life. Because the truth is, often we joke about it in terms of Sunday school, but Jesus is always the answer. The best thing we can ever do is fix our eyes on Jesus, because Jesus will always create a pathway through for us. So we're going to look at some of the Jesus stories and we're going to look at some of the wisdom that we can glean from that. And we're going to look at some of the issues uh, like how do we deal with crazy time pressure the Jesus way? How do we deal with loss and grief the Jesus way? How do we deal with sickness the Jesus way? And today we're going to kick off the series with how do we deal with fear the Jesus way? Now I have no idea how you've been managing the last few months. One of the things I know for me is I've experienced and sensed probably more fear in people's lives, but also in the community that I live in and in the nation than ever before. And uh, that's probably because we've never had to face a pandemic before. But part of the uh, reality of that is the media is full of fear. And social media is full of fear. And if our diet is tuning into that, what we're likely to get hit with is fear. Fear over COVID. Fear over a second wave of it. Fear over the danger that maybe one of our loved ones or maybe ourselves will be ill with it, that we might have to face death. Uh, fear over what's it going to mean for the economy? <clears throat> what's it going to mean for my job? What is it going to mean for my business? Fear over my family. What's going to happen to my kids' ed education? And maybe you've had other fears beyond that, but it feels like it's fear after fear after fear after fear. But you know what? As God's people, we are not meant to be people who live under fear. I haven't counted myself in the Bible, but apparently there's 365 different instances in the Bible where the word do not fear or the phrase do not fear is spoken. And it's interesting it's 365 times because that means every day we need to hear God speaking to us and saying, do not fear. And I just want to take a, a moment to uh, talk about the wonderful new set that we've got behind me uh, happening. Uh, you will have noticed that through the worship hopefully earlier. But uh, we've got pictures around of different contexts and different terrains, but always through each and every one of them, there is a pathway. Because whatever our situation, whatever our circumstance, Jesus is always working to make a way through it for us. And right behind me, if I go over to the side, um, the camera can zoom in on it. We've got a picture of a um, set of walking boots and a rucksack. And one of the senses that we had for this season is one that we need to be prepared and we need to be prepared the Jesus way if we're going to be people who overcome. But the second sense I had is that for many of us in this season, the way it's like a number of things that we faced have put a weight on us. And it's like if we're carrying a rucksack, that rucksack has got bigger and heavier. And part of my prayer for this season uh, and over this uh, series over the next few weeks is actually God will provide an opportunity opportunity for us to lay down our rucksack and maybe to unpack some of the things that have been weighing heavily on us so we can get back to that place of knowing that um, the yoke of Jesus is easy and our burden is light. So today we're looking at the whole issue of fear. Our gospel story for that is Jesus when he calms the storm in Mark chapter 4. Now um, you will probably know the story really well Lucy and uh, read it earlier. The way we're going to do it today is I have with me uh, Robert's iPad and so it means I have the ability to interact with you and remember we did this a couple of months ago on a Sunday morning worked really well then I quite like the unpredictable nature of it um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to read again the story from Mark chapter 4. I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask that God will speak from that passage 
to each and every one of us individually. So rather this morning than just hearing my words, let's invite the Holy Spirit to come and for God to speak a specific word to you this morning, because that's what it means for the word of God to be living and active and sharper than a double-edged sword. So in a moment, I'm going to read the passage and I'm actually going to read it twice. And uh, I just want to prepare you for that. So that when I read it, um, the words will come up on the screen, but maybe you just want to sit silently or quietly in your room and just rest in the presence of God and invite the Holy Spirit to come and speak to you from the passage. Then I'm going to ask three simple questions and talk a little bit about each and every one of them. I'm going to, uh, question number one is going to be, what does this passage show us about Jesus? Question number two is going to be, what does this passage show us about ourselves and our own lives? And question number three is going to be, what do we need to do in response to that? And so it's going to be really simple. And I want to give you the opportunity to interact with me this morning. So as we take each of those questions, as you get an answer or you feel like God's saying something, just put it on the live stream, uh, put it on the chat host um, stream, and uh, we'll be, I'll be able to read out some of those answers. And together we can share around God word and hopefully together God is going to speak to us. So we're going to start by reading again the passage from Mark chapter 4. I'm just going to pray, uh, get yourself comfortable in a place where you can receive from the Holy Spirit and then I'm going to read the passage twice and just be ready for God to speak something significant for your life and for my life today as we spend this time together around God's word. Lord Jesus thank you that you are the word made flesh And thank you, Jesus, that you are with us this morning. And I pray that, Holy Spirit, you will speak significantly to us. Lord, I pray that we will meet you in your word. And so, Father, I I, I bind everything that would be a distraction. And we simply invite you, Holy Spirit, come and speak to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. On that day, when evening came... He said to them, let us go over to the other side. And leaving the multitude, they took him along with them, just as he was in the boat. And other boats were with him. And there arose a fierce gale of wind, and the waves were breaking over the boat so much that the boat was already filling up. Jesus himself was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And being aroused, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, be still. And the wind died down, and it became perfectly calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Why are you so timid? How is it that you have no faith? And they became very much afraid and said to one another, Who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? going to read that again and again let's just invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us this morning and on that day when evening had come he said to them let us go over to the other side and leaving the multitude they took him along with them just as he was in the boat and other boats were with him and there arose a fierce gale of wind and the waves were breaking over the boat so much that the boat was already filling up Jesus and he himself was in the stern asleep on the cushion and they awoke him and said to him teacher do you not care that we are perishing and being aroused he rebuked the wind and said to the sea hush be still and the wind died down and it became perfectly calm and he said to them why are you so timid how is it that you have no faith and they became very much afraid and said to one another who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him. So that's the story. The first question we're simply going to ask this morning is, what does that passage show us about Jesus? And so if God's spoken something to you, if God is speaking something to you, I want to encourage you, put it on the live stream and uh, put it on the chat stream and I'll share back some of the answers in a moment. Um, One of the things that we often say is that to really understand a passage, we need to put it in its context, because a text without a context is a pretext. 
In other words, you can make anything from a text, pretty much, um, if you don't put it in its right context. And there's a couple of things about the context to this story that really help us to understand it. So if you read the passages that come before it, you know that this story kicks off in a place called Capernaum. Now, Capernaum was a fishing village on the northern edge of the Sea of Galilee. And Capernaum was the place where Jesus uh, launched his ministry from and actually is the major location that Jesus works from in the early parts of, of all of the Gospels. What's interesting about Capernaum is it's actually called Jesus' hometown in uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 1. So it seems to be the place where Jesus was living. What's really, really interesting about it, though, is the word Capernaum means village of comfort. And so the story kicks off when Jesus and his disciples are in a village of comfort and then the events that unfold rock that sense of comfort. And I think there's a real significance in that. Second thing to say is that uh, this, is, uh, this story happens pretty early on in Mark's gospel. And in Mark chapter 3, Jesus recruits his first disciples, so he picks them. Then at the start of Mark chapter 4, Jesus gathers them um, next to the Sea of Galilee where he's there in Capernaum. And so many people come to hear the words of Jesus that Jesus ends up climbing into a boat and he uses the boat to create a kind of amphitheater where he can speak from and address the whole crowd. So the early part of the chapter, Jesus is speaking to the crowd. When he speaks to the crowd, it's really interesting the story that he uses because it's there that he talks about the parable of the sower. And you'll know that story probably pretty well, but Jesus uh, talks about the seed that the sower brings is, is the word of God. And he speaks about the sower uh, bringing the word and making it available to everyone. But what he goes on and talks about is he says there's different sorts of ground that the seed lands on. And he talks about the different ground and the different soils um, impacting the ability of the seed to grow and to thrive. And then he goes and talks about the good soil. And so Jesus has, has collected his disciples together. This is the first time that he's teaching his disciples and he's teaching them about what it is to have good soil in our hearts, in our spirits, so we're receptive to the word of God. And it's in the context of that that they then face hardship, they then face a storm, and the storm squeezes up to the top some of the things that they've been carrying in their hearts, which if they don't deal with them will mean that their hearts are not a place that is good soil that Jesus can bring fruit from. So the story happens in a place of comfort. It happens in the context of Jesus talking about the soil of our hearts. We want to be a people who, whose hearts are in a good place so that when God speaks to us, the word is able to put its roots down and then become really, really fruitful in our lives. Now, if we think about this story and we think about what does this story tell us about Jesus, hopefully you've already got a sense of God speaking something. I'm just going to look at this and, and see uh, what people have come with. Wow, lots here. Great. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Malcolm saying read Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is one of my go-to places, actually, when I want to encounter resting in the presence of Jesus. I read Psalm 23 because there's lots in there about finding a quiet place and a place where uh, we can know Jesus bringing restoration and peace into our lives. So maybe for some people, Psalm 23 is something to read this week and hold on to and combat the power of fear with. Juliet, um, hi Juliet, never noticed before that the boat was taking on water which it was, so seemingly it was in danger of sinking. Jesus' intervention was in, uh, uh, in perfect timing, exactly the right time. From Mark on YouTube, I wonder if that's Mark Catchlove. Hi, Mark, if it is. Um, if it's another Mark, hi to you, the other Mark. Um, I remember being told that not giving our burdens to God is like getting on a train up a mountain with a backpack on and leaving it on for the journey instead of getting respite. That's right, isn't it? If we don't deal with these issues, we end up carrying a load that we were never meant to. Colin Granger, Jesus shows power and compassion. Brenton, yeah, I'm struck by the fact that Jesus did care. Yuandi, Jesus wants us to tell him about our problems or where we require help, but he doesn't want us to be worried about it. My wife, this is a really profound one, as every word that my wife says is always really profound. Jesus takes naps. 
And do you know what? That's true. And sometimes we need to find places of physical rest to help sustain us with other stuff. Cool, there's loads of stuff here. <laughs> I'm never going to get through all of this. Cannons and carters. Jesus is so... That sounds, that sounds like a chain of restaurants, doesn't it? The cannons and carters. Or is it just me and Miller and Carter? Um, Jesus is so unfazed by the storm because he knew there was nothing to be afraid of. He knew because he made the seas, he made the wind and the rain. How did he make them? He spoke them into being. He speaks to them to make them stop. The story shows Jesus had the same power as he had at the beginning. He has the same power now. That's a great sermon, isn't it? I think I'll uh, close up the iPad and go home. That's brilliant. Really, really good. Do you know, one of the things that struck me is in verse 36. I've never noticed this before. In verse 36, it says, Leaving the crowd, they took him along with them in the boat, just as he was. And I was struck this week by that phrase, just as he was. And I was thinking, why did Mark say that? They took Jesus in the boat just as he was. Now, I suspect part of the reason that, that uh, Mark put that is he was saying they didn't take any extra uh, provisions or any extra preparations. You know, Jesus got up to address the crowds. Um, it got busy in terms of a day. And Jesus got in the boat just as he was. Didn't put on his raincoat or his rucksack or any of those things. It was just as he was. But I was really struck by the, by the phrase, just as he was. And for me, often at times of struggle, I find that my image of Jesus has been more shaped by my history and my experience and by what other people have said rather than the real Jesus. And sometimes in the midst of storms, what I need to encounter is the, the real Jesus, the Jesus that did make the wind and the waves and therefore has authority over them. The Jesus who is the Prince of Peace and therefore whatever may come at me, whatever may assail me, the Jesus that is bigger, the Jesus is stronger. And one of the things I felt God was saying this morning is we need to ask Jesus to show us who he really is. So we don't just have the Jesus from our history or our memory but we have the, the, the bigness of who Jesus really, really is. And one of the keys I want to talk about this morning is in the hardest times, in the, in the midst of the greatest challenges that I've ever experienced in life, I'm 56 now, I, I've experienced a few cliff edges that I didn't know if I was going to make it through okay or not. And I've had some mornings that I've got up and I've thought I do not know how I'm going to make it through today. And sometimes I've not had the physical uh, resources. Sometimes I've not had the emotional resources. Sometimes I, uh, it's felt, felt like I've had no resilience for it. And when I've got up at those times in those, on those mornings, the only thing I've been able to do is put on some worship and lift my eyes to heaven and worship Jesus. Sometimes I've known if I prayed about the things that I was facing, actually I'd just crumple in tears. So I couldn't even speak the words about them. But what I could do is I could worship Jesus. And whenever I do that, it feels like my image of Jesus increases. The truth of who Jesus is, I can sing along to. And something starts to change in my spirit. And I just felt that God was saying today to some of us, we need to look again at who Jesus really is. Because actually it's the smallness with which we see Jesus that is the problem. And Jesus was there at the creation of the world. Jesus is going to be victorious at the end of the world. There's not one demon or one sickness that Jesus wasn't able to deal with and put under his feet when he was at, at, here on earth. And we need to ask God to increase our vision of Jesus because then we'll know that he's with us in our boat. He's got us and there'll be a way through. And the thing that I particularly felt, and I might take a moment to pray about this, um, I was struck with the fact that Jesus was able to sleep in the middle of the storm. And I just had a sense when I was praying over this morning, there's been a number of us, and over the last few months, sleep has been tricky. And the time that fear pushes in, in my experience most, is in the middle of the night. It's in the darkest hours. And I felt that Jesus wants to release an ability to be able to sleep and rest in his presence. So if you've been struggling with sleep, let's just take a moment. Let's reach out to God. And I'm going to pray the presence of Jesus to come and bring sleep to you. 
Lord, thank you. The truth is, in this story, it was the most crazy time to be able to sleep, and yet you could, because you were the Prince of Peace. And Father, I uh, right now take authority over every demonic spirit that has sought to rob of sleep. And we put it under our feet right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we release perfect peace and the ability to rest right now. And the Holy Spirit, I invite you to come and fill every person that's been struggling with sleep. And I pray tonight, Lord, for the ability to rest secure and safely in your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to encourage you, if you've been struggling with sleep, I think that maybe was a word from Malcolm. Uh, tonight, as you go to bed, read Psalm 23. Imagine yourself by a calm sea in green pastures and let God release his peace to you. And I think for some people, that's going to be a real key to seeing a breakthrough in terms of sleep tonight. So question number one, what does this passage show us about Jesus? Well, it shows us he is magnificent and he's mighty and he's bigger than all of our fears. Secondly, what does this passage show us about ourselves? What does this passage show us about ourselves? And again, if you've got an answer on this, um, put it on the live chat and I'll read some of them in a minute. Um, I just want to say a couple of things on this. Number one, I think we all struggle with fear in one level or another. I, um, I also believe, though, that fear is a spiritual power. When Jesus takes authority over the storm, it says he rebukes it. And that's exactly the same word that Jesus uses when he addresses a demon. And so it's exactly the same kind of authority that he's using. And I believe there's a spirit of fear that the enemy wants to use to cause our lives to shrink. And we need to rise up in the authority of Jesus and put it under our feet so that we do not get hemmed in or restricted by the enemy. Now, lots of us in this season, we faced unprecedented physical restrictions. And I think there's a danger when you come under physical restrictions that spiritual you shrink back. And I, I felt, um, I'm not a fearful person in general, but even I, after a couple of months of lockdown, found that I had to step over a barrier to reconnect with people. I had to step over a barrier to start to talk to people. I had to step over a barrier to walk into a shop. I had to step over a barrier to start to engage again with my neighbours. Now, what was that? It was a barrier of fear. But when I recognized it, I could identify it and then push it back. And the spirit of fear, we have to be intentional to push back. Otherwise, it will restrict us and it will hem us in. Raynard mentioned the verse earlier, but in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, Paul writes and he says, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power love and a sound mind and for some of us we need to take authority over a spirit of fear put it under our feet in Jesus name and step into the power and the love and the sound mind that Jesus has for us now we've got a diagram that uh, we're going to put up on the screen right now which is a diagram that uh, psychologists have made about a comfort zone a fear zone um, and a grow a learning zone and then a growth zone it's called the pathway to growth and it starts off by saying that most of us live in a comfort zone and in our comfort zone that's where we're safe and we're comfortable and note this word we're in control when that gets rocked we get pushed into the fear zone and in the fear zone we lack confidence we get intimidated and uh, quite often we find excuses um, because we start to wobble now, if you can push through the fear zone, you then go into the, the learning zone where you start to problem solve, you start to get perspective, you start to be receptive to outside influence, you start to acquire new skills, and then you push through into the growth zone. <clears throat> and if you can push through those things, then you find a pathway to grow. Now, 
If you remember the context of this story, in this story, the disciples start off in Capernaum, which is the village of comfort. So they start off in their comfort zone. And what happens through, their story, through the story is their comfort gets rocked, which pushes them into fear. And for many of us, what we've had over this season is we've had our comfort rocked, and that's tipped us over into fear. Now, if we don't identify that, you see, if you don't see that that could be a problem, you just retreat more and more into your comfort zone. And the danger with that is your comfort zone uh, actually gets smaller and smaller and smaller. A bit like the voices that, uh, that Vaynant was using this morning when he was singing When I'm Stormy with his boys. But it's like we retreat and we just get smaller and smaller and smaller. But if we recognize what's happening spiritually around us and how fear is trying to squeeze us down, we will put ourselves into Jesus and start to push through that and actually we'll start to learn and we'll start to grow. But to do that, we need to be prepared to do a bit of work around our fears. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you to shout out the answer to your TV set, okay? And I'm going to listen to see if you get the right answer or not, all right? What in this story, it's not a trick, well, it might be a trick question, actually, because it's me. Hey, I'll always do that. What in this story were the disciples frightened of? What in this story were the disciples frightened of? When you've got an answer, shout it out at the screen. The storm! I hear our worship team from the other room shouting, the storm! But you know what? You're wrong. I don't think the, f the key fear in this story is the storm. Everyone's doing a double take now. Do you know what I think the disciples were frightened of? The, the disciples really, their root fear, was about crossing over to the other side. At the very start of the passage, did you notice, Jesus says, let us cross over to the other side. Now, if we're going to understand the passage, we need to understand what was the other side of the Sea of Galilee from the village of Comfort, the place of Capernaum. Well, guess what was the other side? The other side was Gentile territory. It was the land of the Gerasenes, which is what we come to in Mark chapter 5. Guess what the Gerasenes uh, land was full of? It was full of pig farmers. And Gentile territory and pigs were regarded as unclean by the Jewish culture. And so the disciples would have grown up all their life being taught, don't go over to the other side. Those people are unclean. Don't go over there. They're the people we don't want to mix from. Don't go over there. You'll, you'll become unclean if you go over there. Don't go over there. And right from their earliest days, they will have been taught to fear going to the land of the Gerasenes. And what happens in this story is Jesus says, now let's go over to the other side. The instant response in the disciples is, we don't want to go over the other side. We're frightened. We've heard rumors of what those people are like. And actually, the first person they do encounter is, is the guy who's demonized with a legion full of demons. Um, and uh, and it, though, uh, Jesus then deals with those. But it, it, it was right in some ways for them to be afraid. But actually, their root fear was they were frightened of going over to the other side. They then start to go on the journey with Jesus, and they're pushed out of their comfort zone. Then a storm arises. And remember, these were fishermen, and the Sea of Galilee is notorious for storms. They would have been used to storms, even storms that water came over the side of the boat. The storm they'd experienced before, but underneath it, it was the fear of going under the other side that was really was the root problem. And what we have to identify when we unpack our fears is often the presenting fear isn't actually the real issue, but under underneath is a deeper issue. And what we need to do is we need to ask God to expose to us, to show us what is the deeper issue. So, for example, to unpack that and bring it into the current context, you may have been riddled with fear over the last six months that you were going to catch COVID. I just want to say, were you really frightened that you were going to catch COVID? Or were you frightened that you might die? Catching COVID is one fear, and it's sensible. I'm not saying, please hear me right, I'm not saying don't abide by the government guidelines. I think we need to gu abide by the government guidelines. I think we need to be wise, we need to be sensible, we need to do everything, but we need not to come under irrational fear. But actually, maybe you were frightened of catching COVID because really you were frightened of dying. I just want to ask you, why are you frightened of dying? Paul says, to live is Christ. To die is gain. Paul writes, O oh death, O oh death, where is your sting? 
And as Christians, we need to know that we're going to spend eternity with Jesus. Now, I don't believe it's my time to die. I'm not looking to die at the moment. Okay, I believe God's got more for me. But you know what? I can't be bound by the fear of death. Because that actually could stop me doing the things that God wants me to do. Maybe over this last six months, you've been fearful over your kids. And you've been fearful over, your edu- over their education. Let me tell you, what are you really frightened of? Are you really frightened that they might catch COVID because they're in a really low risk category? Are you really frightened that if they don't get their education, what's going to happen to them? Or do you really believe that Jesus has got them? And can I say, I think probably you're not really afraid about your educa- their education. You're really frightened because you have plans and dreams and hopes for your kids. And you're frightened they may not come to pass if they don't have their education. Well, actually, maybe what you need to surrender is trying to control your kids' future and actually trust God that whatever the context, whatever the circumstances, whatever the prevailing climate, Jesus has got them and can still make a way through. And so actually your issue isn't primarily about the education system. Your issue is about controlling your kid's future and the plan that you have for your kid's future. Do you see what I mean? Now, if we ask Jesus to give us revelation over not just what our presenting issue is, but actually what our underlying issue is, then we can get to the roots of it and we can start to push through. Does that make sense? I'm just going to take a minute and double check what's coming in on the live chat in case anybody's saying something. Caroline, let us go over to the other side, leaving the multitude. These words struck me. We need to do this with Jesus. Don't just follow the crowd. Crowds are often led by fear. Do you know that? Don't just follow follow the crowd, but trust Jesus. I'm not saying don't follow the COVID rules, neither am I. Of course we should do it, but actually we need to trust Jesus because he is greater than even even the COVID uh, rules. Perhaps we should accept that the storm is necessary for our growth. This This is Chris Harding. Hi, Chris. Perhaps we should accept that the storm is necessary for our growth. What about that? What about welcoming a storm because of what it will squeeze up to the surface? rather than holding on to some idea that God's supposed to keep me safe. What if, Jesus, what if Jesus is more committed to making us like him than getting what we want? So question number one is, is what does this passage show us about Jesus? Question number two, what does this show us about ourselves? Let me tell you, I think one of the wisest things you could do this week is create some space to unpack with God. God, what are my fears And God, what are the underlying fears? And then as you create a bit of space, find some time to give those fears to Jesus. You know, this week over uh, some issues, over this season, I I felt sad. And uh, I felt like I've had a number of losses, a number of disappointments. And so this week I spent some time with Jesus and I listed on a pad, went to a coffee shop and listed on a pad, um, the number of things that I was carrying a sense of grief and loss over. Um, And I ended up, I listed 20 things, which is not surprising, I was feeling a bit teary. Um, 20 different griefs or losses or sadnesses from this season. I then went for a walk with Jesus with my bit of paper and I prayed and gave him every single one of those losses and griefs. And you know, something started to turn around, something started to change in my spirit. And I just had a sense that if this week we all created a bit of time to sit with Jesus and say, what am I fearful of? What are the areas that I'm being squeezed? And just make a simple list. Then the next thing we can do is find a bit of space. Uh, Maybe for you, you want to go for a walk. Maybe you just want to put some worship on. But one by one, just laying those fears down. Just one by one, just surrendering them to Jesus. One by one, just giving them to him. Number one, what does this passage show us about Jesus? Number two, what does it show us about ourselves? Number three, what do we need to change as a result? I'm going to wrap up in a minute. I'm aware of time. I'm going to... um, Wrap up with two simple things, I think, for how we deal with fear in Jesus' name. Number one, we make sure he's in the boat with us. If Jesus is in the boat with us, we're going to be okay. Jesus was asleep because he knew they were going to be okay. 
actually as disciples had had their eyes on Jesus and rested in him, maybe they would have been asleep as well. well presumably some of them would have been helping sail the ship. Um, but they would have been asleep too. Number one, when we're in the midst of fear, first place we need to run is into the presence of Jesus. We need to make sure Jesus is in the middle of our boat and not just on a Sunday morning when we tune into the live stream. We need to spend time that we worship Jesus. We need to spend time that we listen to good teaching. We maybe need to activate our subscription to Right Now Media. Maybe we need to get into reading gospel stories. We need to make sure Jesus is in our boat, number one. Number two, though, and I think this is really, really, really key. Number two, we need to make sure that Jesus is in charge. What I feel more than anything in this season I feel that what has been rocked is our ability to control things. And for some of us, I th think, I sense, we've been feeling more out of control than ever before. And it's that that's tipped us into fear. Do you know, being out of my control to be under the Lordship of Jesus is the best place I can ever be. Actually, to have to give up on my plans, my hopes, and my dreams actually can be a really, really good thing. And for some of us, this year hasn't been how we planned it to be. Well, guess what? Jesus is bigger than our plans. We don't know how next year's gonna be, but guess what? Jesus is bigger than our plans for next year. And because Jesus has a future and a hope for us, as Reinhardt spoke earlier, we don't have to fear being out of our control and maybe actually being out of our control will be a key to stepping into the bigness of God. I'm going to invite the worship team to come back now because we're going to respond in a minute to worshipping God. But in this season, we're all out of control in one way or another. You know, I, I was thinking one of my biggest fears in this season, one of my biggest fears is we do this on a Sunday morning, we do it really well, but actually because we're not physically able to be together, everybody disappears. I don't know on a Sunday morning what we do because we can actually follow the metrics, but I don't know on a Sunday morning who's tuning in and when. I don't know who's dropping off the edge and who isn't. And so my worst nightmare will be when we regather, there's no one there because everyone disappeared and I don't know how. But you know what? I can't control that. And if I can control that, actually it's putting an unfair responsibility on me and I'm trying to lead in a wrong way. Actually, what I need to do is I need to trust God with the church. I need to trust God with you. I need to trust God that he is at work and I need to take my hands off. And maybe for a number of us in this season, God is saying it's time for you to lay down your plans, your hopes, your dreams, your trying to take control and step into that place that you surrender to me and you trust me. We're going to pray and we're going to respond to, to Jesus right now. So I want to invite you just where you are. Let's close our eyes. Let's present ourselves afresh to him. I know that fear has been a big issue for a number of us. And Lord Jesus, in these moments, I just want to open out my deepest fears to you. I want to open out the areas of comfort that I've been rocked in. I want to open out the uh, griefs and the losses that I've had stirred in me. And I want to step into you. And Lord, in these moments, Lord, I yield trying to take control. I yield trying to do things my way. And Lord Jesus, I invite you afresh into my boat. I invite you afresh into my life. I invite you afresh into my family. I invite you afresh into my circumstances. I invite you afresh into my situation. But I invite you not just to come and fulfill my plans and my hopes, but Lord, I surrender them and say, Lord, will you come and be God? God, I let you take me wherever you want to take me. Lord, in this season, I want to let go of the things you want me to let go of. Lord, I want to repent of where I've tried to control. I want to repent of where I've tried to uh, force uh, my dreams and my plans to happen. 
And Lord, I simply, Lord, I want to bow the knee to you. I want to surrender to you. Lord, thank you. You're the one who made the wind and the waves. You're the one who has the power over them. You're the one who's leading me and guiding me. And Lord, I surrender control and I let you take charge and be my strength and be my hope and be my security. In Jesus' name. And you might want to take a few minutes just to respond to Jesus, just to yield your fears to him or just surrender your life afresh to him. The worship team are going to uh, lead us in, in oceans which is about stepping out and stepping into the presence of God. We've got a live prayer team that are available. If you'd like someone to pray for you this morning and pray you through your fears, just click on the button that requests prayer. Also, if God is stirring a bigger issue and you know it's not going to uh, be sorted out in a 30-second in a prayer uh, over the internet, connect with our prayer team. Say, I, I'd like a prayer appointment with someone. I'd like someone to come and visit me. I'd like someone to come and talk with me. And we will connect you with it. But together, let's be a people who walk through every storm and find the peace and the strength and the hope of Jesus.